Have you ever wanted to film in the expressionist style? Or maybe cubism is more of your thing. Or maybe like in Loving Vincent, you've always wanted to walk in a Van Gogh landscape. In this video, I'm going to combine two of my favorite things, AI and neuroscience, with photography and videography. And I'm going to show you how, using AI, you can transform your video into any artistic style you want without any art skill whatsoever. So stick with me, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's dive right into it. All right guys, so the first step would be to convert video to an image sequence. Then we need to create a keyframe with an artistic style, then transfer that style using AI to all the other frames. And then we're gonna convert the images back to video. For the first step, you can use something like Final Cut Pro, Adobe After Effects, or even iMovie. I'm gonna be using Final Cut Pro. For this second step, you can also use many options, something like Photar or GoArt, or Affinity Photo, or even Photoshop where you could basically make your own style up. I'm going to be using Photar or GoArt because it's very fast and it's free. Now for this third step, I'm going to be using EB Synth Beta, which is free and AI based and it's really, really cool as you will shortly see. Now the last step has the same options as the first step. And again, we're using Final Cut Pro. So this first step, you have your video and you want to convert it into images. Basically go here, you're gonna hit export image sequence. If you don't have that, you have to hit add destination, find image sequence, click that and it should pop up. Now you go there, export image sequence, and you're gonna go into settings and ensure that you have PNG, ping file selected and that you are scaling the image to preserve the aspect ratio. And you're just going to hit next and save that into a folder of your choice. I'm calling mine video images, AI style. And we're just going to save that. And this might take a bit of time depending on your computer hardware, because say for this 37 second video, um, I have about 943 frames, as you can see, each being about 12 megabytes, depending on the re resolution you are saving them at. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, this is a time consuming process, but there it is. <laughs> that is step one, we are already done. Okay, so as I said, for step two, I am using Photar and GoArt. You can get this as an app or you can use the web version like I am going to do. And basically we just have to select what we want to make our keyframe. So I just select the first image in our series. Uh, and you can see that there are a bunch of different styles here. So I'm just going to click expressionism and that is going to apply a cool expressionist style to my image. Um, and you can also vary the intensity here. I'm going to leave it at full intensity. We're going to save this uh, funny name here, but we're going to save it. We're gonna create a new folder called keyframes and we're going to save it inside of there. Now, this is very important. You should take the name of the original file and basically use that. So copy that name, come back to your keyframes folder and paste that name in there. And then you can add the word key to the front so you know it's keyframe, but importantly, it has the same sequencing as your frame. Now, if we look back at that original image, it is 1920 by 1080, which is not the size which Photar spit out. It spit out 720 by 405. So we need to upscale this. So we're just opening it in preview and we're resizing it. So 1920 by 1080, um, we're gonna change the resolution. You probably don't even need to do that, but just hit okay. Uh, there we go, it looks fine. And now there we have it. We have our artistically rendered keyframe, which we will now use for step three. All right, so here we are. We are looking at EB Synth, bring your paintings to animated life. That's what we want to do. You can watch the video, which will show you kind of what they did on the right there, but we're just going to download this. You could put your email in if you want to learn more, but we're just going to download this beta um, and we're going to save this file and then we are going to open it. So I have my file folder open and I'm going to open EB Synth. This is what it looks like. It is quite bare bones, which I like. It's very simple and it just asks you for a few inputs. So it wants um, your video sequence. So we're just gonna drag that first frame into it and there we go. It automatically even loaded our project folder, which is pretty cool. Now it needs a keyframe that goes along with that video sequence. And so what we're going to do is select the keyframe we made. Um, there it is and voila. 
you might notice here that we have these brackets with the hash marks in them. Again, that is because the sequencing of the frames have to align. And that is why I recommend using the naming style that I showed you in this example. Now, you might notice here that we have a mask. Um, we're not going to use a mask for this example, but what a mask would do is that you can make only part of this image be rendered with the artistic style. We want the whole image to be rendered with the artistic style, so we're going to leave the mask off. You might also notice there are some weight options as well as some advanced options. Now, EB Synth has said that these are the best options for most things, so we're just going to leave them like that for now. Now, you might see this stop here, 943. Now, I don't actually want to make all 943 frames uh, have this artistic style because, as you might have seen, um, I changed that style in the intro. So I'm going to go back to my original video and I'm going to find where I said a cubism and then I'm going to put a marker there and just find that frame, which we can do simply because 4 times 24 um, plus an extra 14 frames. So this was frame number 110. Now, interestingly, you might see that I have my teeth showing in this frame. Uh, and if you think back to the keyframe we gave it, uh, there I had a closed mouth. So it's not going to know what to do with the teeth, actually, which means that it's actually not a good keyframe. And a better keyframe might be this one, number 22. So let's do this whole process again really quickly and make a new keyframe. And I'm going to show you actually what the difference would be between these two examples. So remember to name it accordingly and resize it. So here we go, we have our new keyframe. So let's first do the original keyframe, 000. We're just going to synthesize that and you can see that it automatically creates an output folder um, with these new names. And once that's finished, we're going to go ahead and do it with the other keyframe. Um, remember, you have to click the corresponding frame. The sequences have to align. Uh, we're going to make a new output folder with the name of the other keyframe. And again, we want to go to 110. Let's synthesize that. And there we go. We can check one out. And look, it actually knows what to do with the teeth. Now, to give you an example, let's check out the same image with the different keyframes. So here, you can see that it actually knows what to do. Here, it does not know what to do with the inside of the mouth. And that's because our keyframe does not have the inside of the mouth. Um, so very interesting there. And it's just a little note that to make sure your keyframe has all of the elements of your video sequence. Okay. And uh, in conclusion there, we're just going to use keyframe 22. Um, and we're going to use that to go on to our next step. Now, this is a pretty straightforward step. We just need to take our images and put them back into the video format. However, due to the keyframe I chose and the way that EB Synth rendered those, um, I'm going to have to select the images before the keyframe, so 0 to 21, um, first because they uh, will be imported in reverse order. So I'm just going to drag them in here. And while they're selected, you're going to hit Control D, which will allow you to change the duration of these images. And you basically just have to hit one and then hit enter. And now what that does is it makes each one of these images exactly one frame long. And that's convenient because now we can right click and hit new compound clip uh, and change that rate to 24p. And there we go. We have a movie clip. Um, again, this is backwards. So you're going to have to reverse the clip uh, and now it should be fine. Uh, what we're going to do now is clean up our workspace and then select all the rest of these images and we're going to drag them in there and again control D change it to one right click compound clip change that rate to whatever you're doing and then drag that compound clip in and and voila we have our artistically rendered video and you have film in the expressionist style. And that's how you do it. That's how you apply an artistic style using AI to your video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps me out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time.